It may be shocking to learn that there are royals just as interesting as the British royal family. Though they may not get as much airtime as their British counterparts, the Swedish royal family is certainly worthy of the spotlight. From scandals and affairs to royal weddings and babies, they sure know how to keep the tabloid headlines interesting. So what's up with this gorgeous royal family you know nothing about? Well, you've come to the right place, because we are going to take you back to where it all started. Then we will see what the Swedish royals are up to today. To truly understand the Swedish royal family, you have to start from the beginning. The current ruling family stems from a family tree that was established in 1763. That's when King Carl XIV Johan, or his real name Jean-Baptiste Bernadette, was born. This is where it gets a little confusing. Jean-Baptiste Bernadette didn't become King Carl XIV Johan until many years later in 1818. And you might be surprised to learn he was actually French. The first king of Sweden, at least in the most current family, received his crown thanks to his military career career and the French Revolution. It also helped that when he was elected king, that's right, he was actually elected, that he had a son that would replace him after his passing. So when he passed away at the age of 81 due to a stroke, his son Oscar was there to take over. Okay, we don't want to bore you with the rest of the family history, we just think it's important to know that the current ruling family is of French descent and have a relatively modern family tree, especially when you compare them to the British royal family. Now let's get to the present Swedish royal family, shall we? King Carl the 16th Gustav rules the current group of royals gallivanting around Sweden. Let's just say, if you have any clue about Prince Philip's and Prince Charles' infidelities, they don't even compare to what's been said about King Carl XVI's Gustav. His life story has a tragic beginning. When he was just nine months old, his father passed away in a plane crash, which meant he was the next in line for the throne after his grandfather. This was something that loomed over the young prince his whole life. Could you imagine knowing at the age of five that you are one step away from ruling a country? And as it panned out, that's precisely what happened in 1973 when he inherited the crown from his grandfather. Thankfully, he was well into his 20s at that point. Throughout his life, it was apparent that King Carl was a reluctant heir to the crown. It was also even more clear that the people in Sweden didn't really respect him. There were stories of him partying and running around like a crazy bachelor. That all seemingly stopped in 1972 when he met his now wife, Queen Sylvia, at the Summer Olympics. She was the first Swedish queen to ever have a real career before becoming a royal. In other words, she was a commoner. One of the craziest things about this notion is that King Carl's three older sisters lost their royal status when they married commoners. And if the current laws were established back in 1973, King Carl XVI wouldn't even be king, which may have something to do with why he changed the law in the first place. In the years since being crowned the King of Sweden, King Carl XVI has been rattled with scandal and praise. For one, he got rid of the rule that the first male born to the king and queen would be next in line for the throne. Instead, it would go to the firstborn child. The rule changed all the way back in 1980, which meant the couple's daughter Princess Victoria would take the crown after her father. King Carl XVI also banned the law that royal family members lost their titles if they married commoners, which all his children did, along with his sisters, as we mentioned earlier. So, it would seem like he was a pretty progressive king, but that doesn't mean it's been a fairy tale for this family. Back in 2010, a shocking book made headlines that claimed the king had multiple affairs in the 90s. He was linked to adult entertainers in Atlanta during the Summer Olympics. And there was another rumor that he had several relationships with young women, promising to support them and further their careers. When asked to comment about her husband's transgressions, Queen Sylvia had nothing to say. But that could be because she has a pretty shocking past as well. In the same year that the book spoke of her husband's affairs, a documentary shed light on the Queen's family history. According to the program, Queen Sylvia's father was a part of a controversial German World War II political party. You can probably guess which one we are talking about. The Queen is of German descent, but was raised in Brazil. Her family moved back to Germany in 1930 and made a fortune thanks to the war. The Queen has spoken about this before, saying her father only joined the party to keep them out of trouble. She claims she didn't line up with their political beliefs. She also didn't make any more comments, but did seem to regret his affiliation with the party. In fact, she didn't even know anything about it until she was older, and she never was able to confront her father about this controversial past. Now that we've learned all about their parents, let's take a look at the next generation to take the throne in Sweden. First, we'll start with the lady in line for the crown, Crown Princess Victoria. Though her parents have caused quite a stir over the years, Crown Princess Victoria seems to be a fan favorite. Thanks to the law passed by her father, she will take over the crown when he decides to step down or passes away. She gave her first 
public speech at the tender age of 18, and ever since, Swedish people can't get enough of her. She has openly discussed the pressure to be perfect and how she once battled an eating disorder. There is something very relatable about Crown Princess Victoria. Sure, she went to Yale and is in fact Swedish royalty, but she's dealt with issues like dyslexia that you don't always associate with royalty. And there's the fact that she's also got herself a relatively normal husband, Daniel Westling. The pair started dating all the way back in 2002 when he was a personal trainer at a gym in Stockholm. Could you imagine the shock? It was speculated that her father wasn't a fan and the tabloids ripped him to shreds any chance they could. Despite that, the couple powered through and ended up marrying in 2010. That night, Daniel Westling graduated to Prince Daniel. Crown Princess Victoria and Prince Daniel weren't the only royal couple to rock the boat with their relationship. Back when he was one of Sweden's most eligible bachelors, Prince Carl Philip, the middle child of the king and queen, was also making headlines. After ending a long-term relationship, he fell into the arms of an ex-model turned yoga instructor, Sophia Helkvist. She also happened to be a reality TV star as well, but the most scandalous event from her past involved a topless photo and a python. We will just let you imagine that one, but needless to say, it didn't go over well with the Swedish people, and once again, another royal relationship was tested. Though she had all the makings of stirring up the royal court, Princess Sophia was actually welcomed with open arms. According to the Crown Princess, she and Princess Sophia are the best of friends, and now that they are giving Kate and Meghan a run for their money, it's easy to see why. They are always seen together, and they are impeccably chic. That could be why when Prince Carl Philip and Princess Sophia became husband and wife in 2015, there were no protests. Plus, they both looked utterly gorgeous. Anyone else having wedding envy? The youngest of the king and queen's children is Princess Madeline. While her brother and sister were falling in love and keeping love, this princess was having a rough time. She and her long-term boyfriend were engaged in 2009, but that didn't last long. By early 2010, the wedding was called off because her prince-to-be cheated on her during a ski trip. Ouch. Imagine being a princess and getting cheated on. Like, did he actually think he was going to get away with it? Sadly, she had to pack up the pieces in the public's eye, which was probably humiliating. Thankfully, all was not lost for this gorgeous princess. She needed a change in scenery, and after the heartbreaking scandal, she promptly moved to New York to start a new life. While in New York, it didn't take long for her to find a new beau. That's where Christopher O'Neill enters the scene. Christopher is a British-American businessman, and surprisingly, unlike her siblings, didn't cause much controversy when the pair started dating. And no one was shocked when they tied the knot in 2013. But what was surprising was the fact that Christopher decided not to become a prince. He didn't want to give up his citizenship, nor was he interested in leaving his job. It did take a while to move to Sweden, but according to Christopher, he would do anything to be home with his family. That being said, they still have plans of moving to London. One day at least. So now that all the royal children are settled down, you can only imagine what the new generation of royals is like. That's right, this family has grown, and the third generation is young and vibrant. First, we have Crown Princess Victoria's children. Since they are next in line for the throne, they play a huge role in the royal family. In 2012, Princess Estelle was born and became another female first child to be heir to the throne. Then her baby brother, Prince Oscar, was born in 2016. While he may never become king, he's become the king of the Swedish people's hearts. Look how adorable he is. Next, let's take a look at the kids who call Prince Carl Philip and Princess Sophia mom and dad. They welcomed their first bundle of joy, Prince Alexander, in 2016. And not to be outdone by his older sister, the couple had a second son, Prince Gabriel, in August of 2018. Considering she's pretty much a new mom all over again, we aren't sure if this is where the baby making stops for these two, but they sure do make a cute family. Finally, we have the youngest sister, Princess Madeline, and her little ones. Her first child, Princess Leonor, in 2014. And just like her sister-in-law, Princess Sophia, she too welcomed a baby in 2018, though she beat Princess Sophia by two months by delivering Prince Nicholas in June. Again, now that she's a new mom, who knows how many more kids she and Christopher will be up for. But for now, the king and queen officially have six grandbabies. When they aren't chasing their young children around the palace, the royal family is attending several events from the queen's 75th birthday party to watching Princess Leonor in the Nutcracker. See, they are just like us, which is probably why the Swedish royal family has caused a significant stir on everyone's radars. This family is the perfect replacement if you're getting sick of how untouchable the British royal family seems. At least they will keep us entertained until we see Prince Harry and Meghan's little ones. Harry. 
Will you take Megan to be your wife? So, what's next for this exciting family? We are sure there will be more scandals, photo ops, and jet setting. We can be even more confident that the world will start paying closer attention to the Swedish royal family. Considering how much screen time they are getting these days, could we see a reality show in their future? They already have an ex-reality TV star in their ranks. Okay, we are probably getting ahead of ourselves, but we can dream, can't we? Until then, our eyes will be glued to our computer screens to see every move this chic royal family makes. What do you think of the Swedish royal family? Are you a fan and will they take over the world as the favorite royal family to watch? Tell us what you think in the comments section below and while you're at it, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching and subscribe to the Taco for more awesome videos like this.